It was at a workshop in September 2019 that industry, through GS1, began to develop what would become the Global Migration to 2D program. Today it's going really well, with brands and retailers around the world seeing the business benefits of that migration to the next generation of 2D barcodes. The efficiency improvements gained by encoding more than just the GTIN, and the huge opportunities for consumer engagement regulatory compliance and more. Now, of course, as with any technological transition, there's a lot to think about and talk about. X dimensions and print quality, quiet zones, substrates, reflectance, scanner software, scanner hardware, middleware, host systems, data carrier choices, checkout speeds, encodings and syntaxes, and a whole bunch of other things. Now, GS1 member organizations around the world are ready to help answer questions on these topics and more. But when companies do choose to migrate to 2D barcodes using GS1 Digital Link, uh, there's one issue that always seems to end back on my desk. Now, those that get it right have the easiest time implementing 2D barcodes and the easiest time managing the online data. Uh, those that don't have created the most challenging or failed imp implementations that I've seen. Uh, and it comes down to this. This is a QR code, right? Of course it is. You have teams that have been putting them on your products and creating really cool online experiences for years. So, of course, uh, now that you're working to implement a new 2D barcode on your products, the people you're going to hand the project to are the people who've been doing this for marketing and consumer engagement purposes for years. That's the mistake. Right there, that's actually the problem, sorry. Because the single 2D barcode has another job. It also has to scan at the point of sale. And that is a very different thing altogether, as we'll see. Okay, yes. The consumer experience when they scan that QR code with their smartphones, of course that's important. So of course the marketing team is critical. But consumer engagement really shouldn't be the starting point. You need to think of this as a retail point of sale barcode first and a marketing QR code second. Now, barcodes are usually printed at high speed when the packaging is created and then fed into a separate production line process later. And you can do that with QR codes powered by GS1 as well, of course. But if you want to include things like batch numbers or expiry dates to unlock some of those rich use cases, they'll need to be printed on the production line itself, not pre-printed on the packaging. And that means being more aware of things like print head size and accurate substrate alignment than you ever thought mattered. Oh, and don't people love to reduce the size of the QR code? That's going to increase the density of the little modules, the squares, and that's going to make those QR codes harder to print and harder to scan accurately. Sometimes the QR code is squeezed in just one direction. That's going to mess things up at the scanner for sure. Ever seen devices like this before? The company that prints your barcodes will have them, I'm, I'm sure about that, but these are some of the barcode verifiers on the market today. They see what a point of sale scanner sees, and those scanners are a lot more specific in their needs than the phone in your pocket. That's because they're not designed to take panoramic views or eye-catching selfies of good-looking staff, and perhaps enhanced by AI. They're designed to capture data from an optical barcode, and they have to do it as efficiently as they can. Now think about how you go about scanning a QR code with your phone. You might move your phone closer or further away. You might step into the light. You might turn it one way or another to avoid reflections. You might flatten out the surface that it's printed on. If it takes you five or ten seconds to scan it, well, so what? You've got plenty of time. Now think about how you scan products at self-checkout. You quickly show the product to the scanner, put the product in the bag, pick up the next one. Repeat, repeat. A typical checkout operator will easily scan upwards of 40 items per minute, so there's no time to position the barcode accurately. It's got to be quick, easy, accurate. 
And that's why things like backgrounds, print quality and barcode density all matter far more than when you're just scanning with your phone. So point number one, put your phone away and check the QR code on your product with a barcode verifier or make sure the company that does your printing does that for you. That's going to check the quality of the printed symbol according to all the relevant standards. If it passes, it should scan properly at point of sale and your phone will handle it no problem. Point number two is about the content of the barcode and the online connection. The delivery of extra identification data through 2D barcodes is a separate function from engaging consumers directly. And it's critical to separate those two functions and the way the data is managed. That means managing the GS1 digital link URI that identifies the product and is encoded in the QR code separately from the creative way that you manage the consumer facing or business partner facing information that can be obtained through scanning and going online. Now, it's more than possible that those two functions will be carried out by completely different people or different teams. You've got the functional people focused on product identity, itinerary and stock control and the creative team working to engage more customers. The best implementations of 2D barcodes make explicit use of that division through a process called redirection. Now, if you put QR codes on your products before, the URL in the QR code only had one function to get the consumer online. The URL will almost certainly have been very short and redirected to some sort of online service that generates the appropriate response in real time. That's what people mean when they say dynamic QR code. There's absolutely nothing dynamic about the printed QR code itself. That's static. But what you see on your phone when you scan it, that can be very dynamic and tailored just to you. Now, you may not have noticed redirection happen, but it almost certainly did. Look for it next time you scan a QR code anywhere. Uh, here's a, a, just a simple example. The URL in this QR code is really short. If you scan it, you'll be redirected to a, a longer URL that is the product information page. This is normal practice, and it's the best way to keep the static identifier printed in the QR code separate from the location of the dynamic information you want to show to consumers and business partners. It's also very likely that you'll have gathered marketing intelligence from that redirection service too. Now, if the online content management system needs extra data, and it might, well, okay, but that extra data that only the online service needs does not belong in the QR code. If you do that, you're mixing up the identity of the product with the location of the information about the product. They're not the same. In a return environment, the barcode will have a GTIN, perhaps a batch number, an expiry date, a serial number, that sort of thing. Those are the bits of data that you need to be available for offline operations in the back of store and at checkout. And that's all you should ever put in the 2D barcode. Your online content management system might need all sorts of extra pieces of data to make it work. Things like a, a product's place of manufacture, a data production, the language variant to use and more. But that's nothing to do with product identity. So use the redirection server to draw on its own data for anything extra that's needed to send a more detailed query to the online content generation system. All this adds up to why we so strongly recommend that all those 2D codes with GS1 Digital Link should redirect. Don't engineer your website to use GS1 Digital Link URIs. In fact, the recommended best practice is to set up a subdomain of your brand's internet domain name specifically to manage your GS1 Digital Link URIs then, and the redirects from there to the content. A lot of solution providers will help you do that. Now, the worst implementations I've seen, and there have been several, have all occurred where the brand or retailer tried to load loads of extra data that the content management system needed into that barcode. All that does is make the QR code bigger or more dense or both, and that makes printing difficult. It makes scanning difficult. Again, it might be okay for consumer scanning with their phones 
It's not okay for business operations like point of sale. Finally, a GS1 digital link URI has a very specific structure. We've also seen people want to put the GS1 identifiers in the URL in whatever structure they already have in their existing system. Sorry, no. The specific structure in the GS1 standard is what the scanners are looking for and working with for those offline operations. Now, your local GS1 member organization can tell you more about the structure of a GS1 digital link, as can an increasing number of solution providers. They'll be able to tell you how that one 2D code, it has one form, yes, but two functions, an offline one and an online one. They can also tell you how that one 2D code can also be used to discover multiple sources of related information, perhaps in multiple content management systems run by multiple different teams. Uh, but that's a topic for another time. Let me summarize. Shift the mindset on QR codes. It's not always about products and exclusively a marketing aim. It's more than that. With the global migration to 2D, QR codes also carry product identity for use in offline retail business operations. Things like point of sale scanning, inventory management, and so on. As such, it's right to prioritize the implementation for product identity and then leverage that for marketing and communications. Use barcode verifiers to validate scannability for business operational purposes. Now, while both phones and retail business scanners can scan QR codes, the operating environment and conditions for retail are inherently more challenging and require greater consideration than just seeing if your phone can scan it. Minimize the amount of data embedded in that QR code. Consider what data beyond the GTIN you want to embed in, in that QR code to enable your business use cases and what can be managed and enabled through redirection and your content management system. If you need to add extra data for your CMS, use that or add it as part of the redirection service. For one thing, it'll help keep the size of the QR code down, but it also enables that critical separation of product identity from the identity or location of information about it. Structure your data according to the GS1 digital link URI standard in order to prioritize scanning for sale and operational purposes while still enabling the extraordinary opportunities presented by redirection to product information for consumer engagement or regulatory compliance. For more resources and support, contact your local GS1 member organization. We're all here to support industry in the digital transformation and the migration to 2D barcodes.